Hello everybody, uh, welcome to the second of my talks introducing um, the ideas of Marx and Marxism. Uh, in this one I'm going to be talking about what is a fundamental concept to the whole of uh, uh, Marxist thinking, the concept of alienation. Now Marx took over the concept of alienation from Hegel and other philosophers um, uh, and then, uh, but he developed it in a much more down-to-earth, much more materialist way. He wrote about it first in his 1844 Economic and Philosophic Manuscripts, but it remained there as an underpinning of all his uh, thinking through to capital and, and beyond. Um, to understand this and to, to see why it was so important for Marx, we first of all have to realise that the way he used it was different from the way it's used in everyday discourse, everyday language, and also different from the way it's often represented in sociology and in the social sciences today. Um, in everyday language, to be alienated is to be put off by somebody or something, to be offended, to feel excluded because of so-and-so's bad behaviour or a group's bad behaviour or some other characteristic of it. Even, you know, I was alienated from the group because they were too left-wing, even, you could hear. Um, and in sociology, it often means feelings of isolation, loneliness or meaninglessness, particularly feelings that your work is meaningless, meaningless and so on. Then you can be said to be uh, uh, alienated. But in Marx, it's not primarily a feeling at all. These feelings that are, are real enough that people have them, um, but they are consequences, not for, for Marx, not the core of the matter. The core of the matter for uh, Marx is uh, that alienation is an actual social relationship, an actual material fact. In the 1844 manuscripts, he describes as an actual economic fact. And what he centres on Right, is not the uh, gen just the general atmosphere in society. It is human labour. What he's writing about, first and foremost, is alienated labour or the alienation of labour. Now, uh, in analysing this, the first thing that he noted, notes is that uh, in the present world, Workers are alienated from the products of their labour. Or the products of their labour become alien objects which stand over and against them. We make things, and those things that we make, the products of our hands, come to dominate us, come to stand over us, come to threaten us and damage us. Um, examples of this uh, that uh, would be uh, a situation of a, for example, a worker uh, in a car factory who makes cars but then does not own or control the cars that he makes. Rather, those cars create a damaging environment for human beings. Another example, a very dramatic one at the present moment, but an extreme example of alienated labour and its relationship to products of, to its products is climate change. In climate change, quite literally, the products of human labour, fossil fuels and greenhouse gases, turn into something, the, uh, uh, the phenomenon of climate change, through the creation, literally, of a, 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 a layer of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which threaten the future survival uh, uh, of the human race. So that's an extreme consequence of uh, alienated labour. Uh, but Marx goes further than this. He goes beyond just speaking about the relationship of workers to the uh, products of their labour, to talking about that labour itself. He says that if we are alienated from the products of our labour, that must be because we are actually alienated in the labour process. It must be because the labour process is itself active alienation. Um, 
the product, says Marx, is only the summation, the summary of the whole labour process. And so he then looks at what is the workers' relationship to their labour, not just the products, but the labour itself. Uh, and he says that alienated labour is labour which, where the worker does not control that labour, but has to make it over to somebody else, to sell it, in other words. And that was the original meaning, the older meaning of the word uh, alienate. To alienate something was to make it over to somebody else, like you alienate your human rights or something like that. Um, and when we understand that, we can see that uh, alienated labour is in fact wage labour. Or to put it the other way around, wage labour is alienated labour. So it's not just that some particular form of wage labour is unpleasant or bad, working on a production line as opposed to working in an office, working in a mine as opposed to working in a garden and so on. No, but wage labour is alienated labour. And therefore, it's not that alienation is a kind of consequence of the general rotten, exploitative and so on relations of, of capitalism. It's deeper than that, but it, it is that alienated labour is constitutive of capitalism in the same way that wage labour, the spread of wage labour, was constitutive uh, of, of capitalism. To understand the full um, import of the concept of alienation for Marxist thought as a whole, though, we also have to say something about what labour meant for Marx. For Marx, labour was not just some uh, kind of unfortunate necessity for human beings. We have to produce food and other things in order to live. It was that, but it was more than that. It was also the means by which human beings make themselves. It was through labour, Marx wrote, through the labour of producing the necessities of life that we first di differentiated ourselves from animals. And it is through labour, through um, interacting with nature and making the world, that we create society, that we create history, and that we create ourselves. He says that um, all world history is nothing but the self-creation of uh, human beings through labour. And therefore we can see why alienated labour affects everything in society. Um, Marx, when he's spelling this out, says that as a result of alienated labour, we are alienated from our species being, from what it is to be human. We're alienated from ourselves. We are alienated from our fellow human beings and we're alienated from nature. So uh, what, what does this mean? It means, uh, for example, not just that mental illness is an example of alienation. Certainly it is, and alienation can be an important concept in understanding mental illness. Uh, but it also means that war is a consequence of alienation. Nuclear war is, the, is an extreme consequence of alienation. The products of our labour turning against us and threatening to destroy, destroy the totality of the human race. Racism is a particularly vicious consequence of alienation. Alienation from our fellow human beings, reducing our fellow human beings to being less than human. Uh, lastly, the concept of alienation from nature, extremely important. Marx was to develop this much more later uh, in his writing, but extremely important today. Labour is what mediates between human beings and nature. Labour is how we as human beings relate to nature through our labour. If the labour is alienated, we are alienated from nature. I already said that climate change is an extreme example of this, but so is the whole crisis of the Anthropocene. The fact that the Anthropocene, as a new geological era in which we shape and influence the geology uh, uh, of the world and the whole uh, biosphere of the world, but that we do so in a way that is damaging is because our relationship to it is through uh, alienated labour. And so consequently, this concept underpins all of Marx's writings, his analysis of class exploitation, the dynamics of capitalism, the crisis of the world, and so on. 
The last point I want to make here in, in conclusion, though, is that it's only a starting point. Of course, we need concrete explanations and analyses, and Marxism can provide these, of all the things I'm talking about. Faced with a war, the war in Iraq, for example, or another war, you can't just say, well, it's alienation. You have to explain the causes of that particular war, how that particular war relates to the structure of capitalism and the needs of the capitalists and so on at the time. Faced with the phenomenon of racism, you have to look at it historically, how it arose, how it served the interests of the capitalist class, how it divides the working class. All of those things, those mediations have to be understood. If we're going to talk about climate change, we have to understand uh, you know, how fossil fuels are related um, to, to the needs of capital and the science of how they result in uh, greenhouse gases and so on. All, all of those concrete explanations are not uh, unnecessary because of the theory of alienation, but the theory of alienation there at the, the root can lead on to the understanding and analysing those concrete mediations, and in that sense, it's a key underlying concept for Marxism as a whole. Thank you.